So I'm Jeremy Corbell, and I've read your article the best I could, being translated from Hebrew. Yeah, I hope they're going to have a better translation, uh, like a professional translation, maybe later this week. So if, if there is one, I'm gonna I'm gonna mail it to you. Okay. That's great. Yeah. So I I basically have ten questions for you. Sure. I just want to start off just by if you can tell me your name and your occupation. Okay, my name is uh, Ranan. Ranan is my first name. Shaked is the last name. Ranan Shaked. Uh, I'm uh, I'm a writer for uh, Yediot Achronot Daily. The Yediot Achronot is uh, the biggest daily in Israel, and I mostly do magazine articles and uh, features uh, for the weekend magazine um, and some other stuff as well. But, but that that's my my main thing. You recently did an article with uh, Professor Haim Ashed, and your right. story broke the internet. I mean, it received global exposure. Excerpts of your story, you know, have been featured on CNN, NBC, Fox News, Forbes magazine, Vice, and even TMZ. Um, were you surprised by the global reaction to your recent article? Yes, very much so. You know, usually uh, articles that are published here are don't get that much uh, coverage from from world media uh, unless they they have to do with uh, security issues or you know that sort of of, of, uh, of stuff. But but uh, yeah, usually usually you would get coverage from Israeli press uh, and so forth. But but you won't get uh, that much uh, world coverage. So yeah, that was quite quite a surprise. Yeah. And actually, I didn't, I didn't think it was going to get all that because, uh, you know, although it was kind of interesting and, and, and uh, thought-provoking uh, speaking to Professor Ershed, um, I, I don't know if what he was saying was, was such a, you know, a mind-blowing uh, thing. I mean, I mean you've, heard, you've heard about some of the phenomena before if you read some, some articles and, and were into ufology in any sort of way. So, so uh, he's just... Uh, he's just I guess a, a leading figure and a major figure uh, here and, and possibly worldwide. Uh, so when he when it comes from him, uh, possibly it has some some more impact. Yeah. So that's what I wanted to talk with you about. I mean, your article was kind of chopped up, and they took little quotes and and made them the the lead. But I was right. able to read the the full story, which has a lot more context. So how you're showing that it wasn't as impressive to you? This stuff has been covered. It shows the appetite of the global public about the UFO phenomenon at this time. But what you said is really critical. It's who is saying it. So can you tell me from uh, an Israeli perspective or global perspective about Professor Ashad, um, who he is, what he's done in his life separate from all of this? Basically, he's one of the, uh, of the leading figures uh, in, in uh, Israeli aviation. Uh, he has been for years, uh, you know, he's 81 years old now, and he's not even retired. I mean, he still works for uh, for, for for some establishments, I think. Uh, but uh, what he's best known for is his work uh, uh, in um, kind of inventing and, and, and putting together the, the first uh, Israeli satellite uh, back in the 80s, uh, which was a big deal because Israel was at the time, you know, and it still is, but it, it's, it's not a major player in, in, in any of these fields. And, and we were actually the seventh country, I think, uh, globally to, to, to uh, launch a, 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 miss, a, a, you know, a, a satellite. So that was a big thing uh, back in the 80s. And then he was also, uh, he, he was for like 29 years, I think, uh, the head of the Israeli um, Space Agency. Uh, and he actually started it and, and he led it uh, for almost three decades. So, so yeah, he's, he's a major figure. He's, uh, and he, won, he won a couple of prizes, like prizes for stuff that he did here that, that weren't even published. I mean, it, it, 
it's still it's still uh, being censored. Uh, I mean, you can now you can t you know it is it was published that he won the awards, but they couldn't publish what it was for, uh, like national security uh, type of thing. So so yeah, he's he's uh, he's very uh, he, he's a he's a senior character. Yeah, so I, you know, I've got a, you know five bullet points of his career that are that are public, and he's a retired brigadier general in the Israeli forces, a former director of the space programs, as you mentioned, for the Israeli Ministry of Defense for thirty years. Right. Uh, he was an officer in the Israeli uh, military intelligence, and he served in a very secret unit, Unit eighty one, serving the defense forces. Um, throughout his career, as you mentioned, he he received the Israel Defense Prize three times. Right the nature of which is classified, why he won that prize. Um, right. And a couple other things. I mean, he's also a, a professor uh, at the Asher Space Research Institute, holds a bachelor's degree in electronics and engineering, a master's degree, a doctorate in aeronautical engineering. Uh, right. he's, been described in your, he's been described in your media as the father of the Israeli satellite program. So by all means, this this gentleman is credible when it comes to space and and space aviation. So yeah. did you find him credible uh, as a human being sitting in that room with him or, or interviewing him? Did you find him yeah, credible? Yeah, very much so. You know, he, as I was mentioning, he's, he's, he's not very young, but he's very, you know, he's totally there. He's very well educated about everything he speaks about. I mean, as far as I can tell. And uh, he's very energetic. Um, you know, sometimes he would want, you know, he would jump from from one one point to another just because he wanted to to say so much about so many things. But but other than that, uh, he's very much, uh, you know, he he was there. He was an excellent uh, interviewee. Um, um, did you know? Did you know what he was going to talk about? Did you know he was going to talk about UFOs and aliens before you went in to, to interview this uh, exceptional individual? You know, I kind of did. You know, the, the reason we met uh, was, was his book. He published a book about his, uh, basically an autobiography. Um, and most of the book, like two thirds of the book, uh, aren't about ufology. It's about his life and his, his career and, and, you know, everything that you have described and some other stuff. Uh, but the uh, the last part of his book, uh, like maybe quarter of the book, uh, is about ufology and and uh, you know findings from from the last decade or so. Uh, and uh, obviously uh, we were very much interested in that. Um, and and I thought he was gonna you know he, I didn't know how willing he would be to to discuss that at length. Uh, and I was surprised to find out that he was very much interested. Actually, uh, before I even brought the subject up, I thought we would, you know, first we'll talk about his career and then various endeavors. Uh, but uh, no, I, as soon, almost as soon as we started talking, uh, he he, uh, he brought that up and, and he said, he, you know, and he wanted to talk about it. That that's what he he was most excited about. So yeah, so we devoted a large part of the uh, conversation. Uh, to, to get. Yeah, yeah there, there's a, a new wave of military acknowledgement about the UFO presence and the UFO mystery. The world mm -hmm. has been told UFOs are real. We have them on video, the famous uh, uh, video footage by Commander Underwood uh, of the Tic Tac UFO off the west coast of, of California. Mm -hmm. uh, Commander David Fravor is another story I reported on. He's the fighter pilot that chased a UFO. So our United States government, kind of slow to the game, has started admitting and providing evidence and proof and saying we have active programs to study this. But some people are claiming your article was a sort of uh, exaggeration, or sorry, it was a sort of publicity stunt for Professor Shedd's book. He did do the interview to promote his book. Otherwise, I don't know if you would have done an interview uh, at this time. Uh, but you know that's very that's very uh, common. I mean, usually, a person of, of, of this stature would, would you know give an interview, would grant an interview uh, for a reason. And and um, I, I don't think he was up to any publicity stuff. Actually, he's not the, that type of person. He's you know he's a, he's a science person and, and he's a he's a serious man. I, I don't I don't think he's very knowledgeable about you know media and publicity stunts and all that stuff. He, he was just doing what his PR person told him he, he needs to do, and that. 
was uh, to grant an interview. That, that that's all. I, I you know, but you know, we, we should always consider that that um, that the uh, that interest in that subject always rises. Uh, at various times of, of you know, uh, growing distrust in, in the establishment and, and governments and, and media. And we've seen that uh, back in the 90s and we, uh, you know, when, when the internet was, was growing and we see it now, uh, you know, and we know, why, you know, right now with, with all the, uh, you know, fake news and, and social media, uh, stuff that, that people are, are, you know, gradually growing uh, impatient and, and this, they don't trust anymore the, uh, the regular media and, and, and the governments and, and the establishment. And, and so uh, ufology comes back to, to the foreground uh, and, and it's being discussed uh, more heavily. I remember, you know, the wave that we had when the X-Files was broadcast back in the 90s. Uh, so, so... I would suggest, you know, uh, discussing it, of course, uh, and and urging our governments to to, uh, to give us whatever information they might have. Uh, but you know, keeping a, a, some sense of, of, of skepticism, you know, a sense of skepticism, because because we still don't. I don't know about you, but but as far as I'm concerned, I I, I never come across I came across any any uh, physical evidence. Uh, such. Yeah, I mean, the seeker is the finder. People need to dedicate, you know, a lot of time to getting to the bottom of this complex woven mystery of what are UFOs? Are they machines visiting here? Where are they from? What are their intent? I guess my right. question for you as a journalist is, well, one, you've just urged that other countries and countries do tell us the information they have. And I, I agree with you. I think that this information is a right. We have a right to know if we're alone in the universe. If we have evidence to the contrary that, that we're alone, we should know it as a global culture. But as a journalist, you have to have a good bullshit meter. You know, you have to be able to read people. Right. When you interviewed uh, Professor Ashed, can you tell me, did he seem to truly believe the things he's quoted as saying? Yeah, very much so. He, I'm, I'm, he is totally into it. And, and the good thing about one good thing about him is that everything is, is kind of document. He has documents uh, for everything that he claims uh, is true. And, and, and he also, again and again, to show me uh, various articles and documents and videos and what have you. Uh, and he has this really big library uh, of, 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 you know, of his research of, of, for, from the last decade or, decade or so. Uh, so he's he's truly, I, 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 you know, I, I got the impression that he was uh, very much convinced himself, and, and not only that, that he is also convinced that he has the uh, the evidence. And he, he was he kept saying that the uh, mainstream academy uh, will not will not cooperate on that, and, and that that um, you know he, he wasn't able to to get their uh, to get their uh, cooperation uh, or or consent. Um, but still, he said that, that at this point in his career, uh, you know, he, he earned his, his, uh, whatever, his awards or his, his, his credentials, and he doesn't need to, to, to be that cautious anymore, and that's why he wants to, to come out with it. Right. He, he spoke about a lot of things that I've reported on, and scientists and people within the military that I've interviewed for my movies and uh, for my social media. For example, he mentioned uh, Robert Bigelow. He mentioned the, the NIDS, National Institute of Discovery Science Organization that studied Skinwalker Ranch. He right. um, mentions the Bigelow Advanced Aerospace Space Studies, maybe not by name, but that was the Defense Intelligence Agency group working under OSAP um, right. that, that did these experiments. So I know the scientific community has had an allergy to looking at the evidence, and it's a big shame. Well, he, he also mentioned the, uh, the thing in Hawaii, the uh, Oma Oma, uh, I don't know if I pronounced yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, the, the deep space, I guess you'd call it, asteroid. The, or the, uh, yeah. Professor Lay from Harvard, who, who was quoted saying that it was a UFO. Uh, and uh, yeah, and he was also talking about stuff we already uh, heard about, like, you know, various pres American presidents that, that were said, that have said before that, that they had close contacts or, or you know, Eisenhower signing an agreement with, with uh, 
UFOs to, to have their base in Nevada. Uh, so yeah, he, he was, he was uh, talking about all of this. Yeah, I mean, I guess the question that people want to know is, someone of that military stature, that political stature, is he speaking from what he has read and deduced, or is he speaking from personal experience where he've, he's engaged other scientists? My impression was that, yeah, he, he was very, as I've said, well-educated about the uh, existing media and, 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 uh, and other publication, you know, publications. But, but uh, he also said a couple of times that he was speaking to his colleagues uh, either at uh, various academic uh, institutes and at NASA, and that they were say that, that he heard stuff from them that he is not uh, he, he cannot quote directly um, or repeat or or uh, publicize yet. But but yeah, he he has he also learned stuff from from his connections with people who investigate the subject and not only the uh, media. Regarding UFOs, he has direct information that he can't disclose. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what he was saying. Yeah. Fascinating. So, because your article, it a bombshell across the world, and it was kind of parsed into these little quotes. Uh, the parts that made it in the translation, I got this translation right off of your paper's official Facebook page. There's seven quotes, and I just want to read them for whoever you know watches this, and I want to know from you, is this lost in translation? So let me just read you the seven and then see what yeah, you say. Ahead. Okay. Uh, the UFOs asked uh, not to advertise that they are here. Humanity is not ready yet. Trump was on the verge of finding out, but the aliens in the Galactic Federation say, wait, let the spirits calm down. They, they don't want us to have mass hysteria. They want to make us sane and understanding first. They waited until today for humanity to evolve and reach a stage where we will understand what space and spaceships are. He said, there is an agreement between the US government and the aliens. He said, they signed a contract with us to experiment here. They are also investigating and trying to understand the rule of the universe. And they want us as helpers. Uh, there's a, a, a ground base on Mars and that's where their representatives and our American astronauts are too. And he said, if I came up with what I was saying five years ago today, I would have been hospitalized. But uh, every place that until today, I went to the academy with this, they said, the guy has lost his mind. Today, we are already talking differently. I have nothing to lose. I received my degrees and awards. Did he say those things to you or is that lost in translation? Oh, yeah, no, no. He said all of these things. All of these, uh, these are really, uh, you know, you, you're quoting from... Uh, Various snippets from from the uh, interview, but yeah, he said of these things. Maybe with the exception of, of the uh, agreement between U.S. government and the UFOs, uh, he was referring to the uh, Eisenhower uh, thing, uh, and his uh, he quoted his uh, granddaughter Jackie. I think. Okay, understood. Eisenhower's that. daughter, who said her grandfather told her uh, that there was such an agreement. I don't think he he uh, that, that's that would be my only my only. I mean, this is this that. is why he was quoting her and and. All the other stuff that you've uh, quoted was was uh, was right on the nose. Yeah, it was, that, that's basically what it was saying. Yeah, th this is why the context of your full article, which was eloquently written, is so important because he's not claiming this himself as an official. He is saying this is one part of the story or mythology or story itself of of ufology. He's telling you somebody else said this, and that's so important that people understand that distinction. The other thing he said that really made me stand back a little bit was, where did he come up with the term Galactic Federation? Was that a generalized term or was that a specific thing he was quoting? Uh, that's, uh, you know what, <clears throat> I would have to uh, kind of uh, blame myself for not uh, further investigating with him the subject of the, uh, of the Galactic uh, Confederation or Federation. Uh, I, I didn't get into that because, because there was so much to talk about. And I cannot really tell you what he was referring to, only that he mentioned that they had nine members. Uh, all are, are better evolved than we are uh, at this point, and that they were examining us, and, uh, you know, that they, and, and that they have specifically uh, asked before not to be exposed yet uh, here on Earth. Um, but that's that's all I got on this subject. Maybe we should have gone further into it, but we did not. So Professor Ashad is a sane man. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm, I, 
<laughs> I'm just a journalist, you know. I'm 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 not a I'm not a professional uh, on that. But if you talk to him, you get the one-on-one -on -one with him. He he appears to be very much uh, sane, and uh, and uh, you know he's he, he's a he's a, he's a he's a fascinating uh, person to talk to, and yes. and he's not at all uh, out of touch in any way that I was able to uh, to note. Uh, really, I mean, uh, he's he's very much here and now, and, and he's, he's he's there in the room. And he's uh, as far as I can tell, he's he's very much he's very sane. Yeah. <laughs> so he's you know he's telling us from information he might personally know from agencies like NASA, but also what he's deduced over time that UFOs are real and we're being visited by other intelligent beings. That was the crux of what he said, despite the details, whatever they may be. What I think we can take from that is, is that obviously we are not alone. It doesn't make any sense that we are alone. Again, there are like 300 million stars, uh, and so many, so many of, 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 of various uh, galactics that, 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 that they have, that they have uh, the right conditions for, uh, for life forms to, to, uh, to, to uh, evolve. Uh, and and I think we can uh, pretty much I would say take that for granted uh, that that we are not alone in the universe and uh, you know if we're not alone it's just a matter of time before uh, we do get to contact um, if not already our colleagues I don't know if they're colleagues I don't know what they are but, uh, other people from other places right. Other, other, yeah, other species and, uh, yeah, and other life forms, hopefully. Yeah. Well, look, it, it was a truly fascinating um, article when I was able to read what I believe is the full version. And I really do hope that it goes beyond the, the punchline, beyond the, the, you know, just the quotes from your article that people can read the context because it does seem that Professor Shedd is a very thoughtful and serious person. And he's saying things that have great impact if any of it is true, and I know we all want to know the truth, my curiosity is weaponized, that's what I like to say, because it, it's a weapon for me, is, is being able to speak with someone like you, talk with him, it's one step closer to knowing the truth. So I just want to thank you for an eloquent article and thank you for speaking with me. Uh, and yeah. uh, you know, let me know if you find out anything else about this in your journalism. If there is any, uh, if there's any, any, any developments, I will let you know. Thanks, Renan. Same here, take care.